The cost of Medicare is almost a trillion dollars annually. And that trillion dollars comes primarily through taxes. Are you aware of how much Medicare taxes you're paying? And also, are you aware of the hidden tax that some people have to pay? Let me show you. All of you who have worked and those of you who continue to work uh, are contributing to uh, Medicare as well as uh, the Social Security programs. The way we do that is through what is called FICA taxes. If you work for someone, that's a federal um, insurance uh, contribution act. Or if you're self-employed, it would be self-employment contribution act. And so that total tax rate right now is equal to 15.30%. So if you're working for someone, the breakdown is this. For every dollar that you're making, 6.20% um, uh, of every dollar you make is, is going to fund Social Security, and your employer is matching that. Uh, if you are working for someone, uh, your Medicare tax right now is 1.45%, uh, and again, your employer is matching that. So you can see here, uh, you're putting in uh, 7.65, and the employer is putting in 7.65 uh, to fund these two government programs. Now, if you're self-employed, as you already know, you're paying the full amount. So 12.40% of every dollar is going to Social Security, and then 2.90% uh, is going to uh, fund the Medicare system. Okay, and so the point is we're all contributing to these. And so these are the standard Medicare taxes. This is what everyone is paying uh, that is working or is self-employed. Now, keep this in mind. Um, the, the Social Security uh, does have a limit. In other words, not every dollar that we're making uh, is gonna be taxable. And so what happens is this limit is this year in 2023, up to $160,200. So anyone that's gonna be above $160,200 in 2023 will not have to pay this 12.40% any longer. In other words, those social security taxes will drop off. This is the maximum uh, limit uh, that someone will be taxed. But now when it comes to Medicare, that's not the way it is. Those Medicare taxes never ever stop. As a matter of fact, what happens is there's an additional Medicare tax for people uh, that would be considered to be a high income and that additional amount beyond this 2.90% is actually 0.90%. And so let me show you a tax form that's used to calculate those additional Medicare taxes. And again, this is going to be a tax that's assessed for people that are considered to be high income. All right, and so what you can see, this form is called an 8959. This is something, of course, that you or your accountant would actually fill out. That's an additional 0.9% uh, for high income wage earners. And so you can see on the 8959, it says your Medicare wages. So let's just say your wages are uh, $400,000 right? And you would have paid 2.90% uh, uh, for all that money, which uh, um, amounted to $11,600 in your Medicare taxes on the base rate of that 2.90%. Again, if you're uh, self-employed, you would have paid the full amount. If you work for someone, they would have paid half and you would have paid half. Good. So they asked for a Medicare wage, and then we come down here, and it talks about some other items of income, and we're just going to call those uh, to be blanks. But then it says here, enter the following amount for your filing status. So if you're married filing jointly, married filing separately, or single head of household, you'll notice here that we have different numbers. All right, so $250,000 uh, above that, we're gonna pay additional taxes. If we're uh, married filing a, a joint return separate, anything above 125 or a single, or have household anything above 200,000. So in my example, let's just say that uh, uh, this is for uh, someone that's married filing a joint return, and so they would put in here $250,000, okay? And so they made $400,000, that was subject to the 2.90%, but now they have this additional tax uh, above the 250. So they subtract these two numbers, and so what they're responsible for would be $150,000 uh, of additional income that this 0.90% is gonna be applied to. And that's what it says, additional Medicare tax on Medicare wages multiplied line six, this right here, times 0.9%. And I did the math on this, and this would be an additional $1,350 that they would owe in taxes. So again, anything above these thresholds, we're gonna have this additional uh, Medicare tax. So with Social Security, eventually, uh, we'll reach an income level. We don't have to pay any more taxes, but not so when it comes to Medicare. Hey, just real quickly, if you're finding this video to be helpful, you can like, comment, and subscribe. And if you do so, that'll let YouTube know that this is helpful information, and they'll send it out to others who also need to learn about Medicare. And then lastly, 
let's look at what we're calling the hidden Medicare tax. And this hidden tax is something that high income people also have to pay. Now this is only for those that are actually on uh, Medicare A and B. So let's talk about how this hidden Medicare tax occurs. First off, uh, we know that there are two parts to Medicare, parts A and part B. Now A for 99% of all people is gonna be a zero premium. And the reason for that is Medicare says they will not charge a premium for your part A benefits as long as you have paid into the Medicare tax system that we just talked about for 40 quarters. Okay, whether that was through self-employment or FICA taxes, you put in 40 quarters, which is basically 10 years worth of work. Now, most of you have worked much longer than that. You have a lot more than 40 quarters, but we have to have at least 40 quarters to get Medicare Part A uh, at, at zero premium. If someone doesn't have 40 quarters, then we try to get that 40 quarters from someone else's work record, meaning either an existing spouse or an ex-spouse or even a deceased spouse. So the way we get 40 quarters from someone else's work record, if we're presently married to someone and we've been married a year, you actually can use their work record. If you were married to someone and they died uh, while you're married, as long as the marriage lasted nine months, you did not remarry prior to the age of 60, you actually can draw benefits off of that deceased spouse. Now, if you're married to someone and now you're divorced from them and you're single uh, and you don't have your own 40 quarters, you actually can draw from an ex-spouse as long as they're number one uh, Social Security eligible, don't have to be taken, but they got to be eligible, and uh, your marriage had to have lasted for 10 years or longer and you did not remarry prior to the age of 60. So we can always draw from someone else's 40 quarters if that's going to be possible. So that's why Medicare A is free for 99% of all people. Now, those who have to buy it have to pay a premium. It depends on how many quarters they have will determine uh, what they have to pay on a monthly basis. So zero for most people. Now, B is not going to be zero. Uh, B premium this year for most people is $164.90 a month. Now, for those people that are on Social Security, this Part B premium is going to come right out of their Social Security check. If they're not on Social Security yet, they'll bill you for this quarterly or they'll do a bank draft if you'd like to do it that way called a Medicare Easy Pay. But my point is we have to pay a premium for Medicare Part B. Now, the Part B premium is not going to be based upon our 40 quarters. Now, we have to have 40 quarters to be eligible for it. But what happens, uh, we're going to pay a premium. That's going to be based upon what we call our modified adjusted gross income. Modified adjusted gross income. Now for Medicare purposes, the modified adjusted gross in income is your AGI line. And if you file um, uh, the 1040 long form, that's typically around, I think right around uh, line 11 or so. But uh, it says this is your adjusted gross income modified by adding back in tax-free interest, which is typically uh, any kind of a U.S. savings bonds that um, uh, uh, you uh, use for uh, higher education expenses. It could be municipal bonds uh, that you invested in that uh, you didn't owe any federal taxes on. So they take your AGI and they add that back in uh, with taxes and interest, which is usually line 2A on your, on your federal return. So that number is what determines how much we pay for our Part B premium. And that number, that modified adjusted gross, is always two years prior to when you're, you're on Medicare. So if I'm out here and I'm in 2023 right now and I am taking, I'm on Medicare, they're gonna look back at my 2021 modified adjuster gross income. Well, why didn't they look at 2022? Well, today is January the 20th, uh, 2023. Uh, uh, I doubt anyone's filed their taxes yet, so they can't look at 2022. Uh, we have until April 15th and even beyond that if we do an extension to October 15th. And so that's why they always look back two years. So if I'm on Medicare in 2023, they're looking at my modified adjusted gross for 2021. And so if I'm a single filer, file a single return, if that modified adjusted gross income for 2021 is $97,000 or less, I pay that $164.90. Now, if I'm a married person filing a joint return, $194,000 or less, again, each of us would pay $164.90 for our Part B premium. However, if I'm going to be above these limits, a 90, above 97 single filer, above 194 as a mar married filer, then I'm actually gonna have to pay an additional amount for my Medicare Part B as well as for my drug plan. And that's why we're calling this a hidden Medicare tax. Now, they don't call it a tax, but it certainly is a cost. So it's just like taxes. This is gonna be additional out-of-pocket expenses for you to be on Medicare. And so let me show you how this works. So this 
this additional uh, Medicare expense or this hidden Medicare tax is actually called an IRMA. And that's an acronym that stands for Income Related Monthly Adjusted Amount. Okay, Income Related Monthly Adjusted Amount. And so if I'm going to be on Medicare in 2023, uh, they're going to look back at my 2021 uh, Modified Adjusted Gross Income. So we have a schedule. And so you'll see here uh, that we actually have five different levels of IRMAs. Now this group here does not have an IRMA. This is what I was telling you when I said a single filer, anything uh, $97,000 or below, we just pay that $164.90, the, what we call the standard base premium. Now let me tell you what this number is because they just didn't pick this randomly. What this number represents is 25% of what it costs the government uh, to cover you for your Medicare Part B expenses. So what they do is, as we went into 2023 and in, in, in uh, the year of 2022, they project what they believe it will cost them to cover people for Medicare Part B. So what they're saying is what it cost them in 2023, it would cost about $660 to cover, cover the average recipient for Medicare Part B, 660. So at these income levels, uh, individual 97,000 or less or a couple, uh, 194,000 or less, what are, you, what are you doing? You're paying 25% of what it costs them to cover you. And the other 75% for your Medicare Part B expenses are coming out of that Medicare budget, that $1 trillion budget that we had talked about. So at these income levels, we pay 25%. But as our income goes up, and again, you can see we have five different uh, levels of income here. As our income goes up, what they start doing is they start adding uh, IRMAs. They add this IRMA. So at this income level, they're adding 65.90. At this one, 164. So you can see they just start adding these to this base premium. So what is happening is uh, as people's income goes up, the government is not taking as much money out of the budget to offset your expenses. You're actually paying additional amounts of money. So here, when we have no IRMA, what are we doing? We're paying 25% of the cost uh, to cover us for Part B and Medicare pays the other 75%. So here we're paying 35%. Here we pay 50%. Here we pay 65%, here we pay 75%, and here we pay 85%. So as your income goes up, they're saying, uh, we're not gonna help you as much, and you're gonna pay more of those Part B expenses, all right? So we can see at the highest income level here, this thing can be as high as $560 just for our Part B premium alone uh, because of this high income. Now, notice also uh, my high income will affect how much I pay for my Part D plan. Again, if I stay below these thresholds of 97,194, there's no IRMA for my drug plan. So if I'm on a drug plan that costs me $7 a month, uh, that's all I have to do is pay the $7. But as my income goes up and I have an IRMA for this, now they're gonna add this to my drug plan. So you can see at the highest level, not only would you pay the $7 drug plan, but you paid an IRMA of $76. So at the highest income levels, what we have, we have additional IRMAs of about, what, $470 uh, every single month. So again, this is a wonderful problem to have if we're high income. It's just going to be an additional tax or additional costs uh, for your Medicare uh, Part B as well as Part D. Hey, my name is Josh Music, and if you've been enjoying my dad Marvin Music's content, you really need to go to our website, MedicareSchool.com. When you go there, you'll be given the opportunity to download a free one hour Medicare Essentials workshop. And it's gonna take you all the way from Medicare A to Z. By the time you're done watching that workshop, uh, you're gonna know how to enroll in Medicare, when to enroll in Medicare. You're gonna know the differences between Advantage plans, supplemental plans. You're gonna know how to get drug coverage. You're gonna know everything you need to know to get the best coverage possible. So go ahead, go to MedicareSchool.com and watch the Medicare Essentials Workshop. Now there are times when people's income, even after they retire, continues to be very high and they have continued uh, IRMAs. However, there are times when people's income is gonna go down drastically because they're no longer working. And so if we have what's called a life-changing event, something changes, uh, then uh, uh, Medicare says that they will allow us to appeal the IRMAs. And so these life-changing events, are, there's only eight of them, and you can see what they are here. Marriage, divorce, death of your spouse, work stoppage, which means you're totally retired, work reduction, semi-retired, loss of income producing property. That doesn't mean you owned a piece of property and you sold and took a loss. It means that that was uh, uh, maybe destroyed in a fire or a mudslide or, or an earthquake or something, and you no longer have that as, um, uh, as income. Uh, loss of pension income, that means you were getting a pension from a company and uh, they have gone bankrupt now and you lost that income or 
employer settlement payment, you lost that as well. So the whole point is we have to have one of these life-changing events. The majority that we use would be either work stoppage, someone fully retires, or redu re work reduction, uh, they're going to semi-retire. Now, by the way, if we use a life-changing event of a marriage, uh, that just simply means that someone may have had uh, an IRMA uh, while they were single uh, because their income was high, but when they get married, because that limit goes up, maybe as a married couple, now they, do, uh, they wouldn't have to uh, pay an IRMA. So all we have to do is prove with the marriage license and the date of the marriage, and they can, we can actually drop off the IRMA. If we have a divorce, uh, you filed a joint return, and now you're filing a separate return, and so they're looking back two years, and, but so uh, if you've had a divorce, we can say, don't look back two years. We now have had a divorce, and now I'm filing a different type of return. So again, that would give you the ability to appeal the IRMA if indeed uh, your numbers have changed or the death of your spouse. Together you made more money, now it's going to be less. And so uh, if they, you don't want them to look back too, you would actually report the date of death, prove with the death certificate that occurred, and then you can appeal the IRMA. Same thing applies with work stoppage or work reduction. You semi-retired or retired, we just simply have to list the date that you retired or semi-retired, and then we're saying through this IRMA appeal, we're saying don't look back two years. Uh, I'm starting Medicare. I'm on Medicare in 2023. Uh, you're looking at 2021, and uh, I'm now retired. And so what we can do, we can give them new numbers, and you can see on the form. So you can put in the tax year here. Let's just say 2023, and uh, let's say that uh, in 2021 you're $350,000 modified adjusted gross. Now you're retired, and now you're going to be at $120,000. $120,000. Uh, adjust your gross income. Let's say you don't have any tax exempt interest, uh, no uh, municipal bond interest, or um, a U.S. savings bond interest. So that's a zero there. And let's say you're uh, married, uh, filing a joint return. Uh, you assign this document. And so what's happening is we're saying, look at 2023. No longer look at 2021. Why? Because I stopped working or I reduced my work hours or whatever. And so if we have a life changing event, we can appeal this. And we're saying, don't look back. Let me give you my projection. Now, now, when you make that projection, you should be as accurate as possible because they're going to go back and audit it for sure. But as long as we're below that threshold, those IRMAs that we would have had to pay here will now be dropped off. And you typically want to appeal the IRMAs as soon as possible. Now, you cannot appeal the IRMA until you first get the letter where they're saying they're going to charge you one. Uh, those of you that are high income know you're going to get the letter, but you got to wait before uh, uh, you can appeal. So once it uh, appeals, you fill out this form, uh, and it takes literally five, 10 minutes to do this. It's not very hard. Uh, for our clients, we do all this for you and with you for sure, but you want to be sure to do it because why? You'll have to pay those uh, IRMAs if you do not appeal it. So if we win the appeal, uh, and again, they won't fight you on this whatsoever. They're happy uh, to drop those off. You just have to prove that you uh, are worthy of getting uh, those numbers uh, changed for sure. All right, so that's called the IRMA appeal, and it's very important to do that. Now keep this in mind. Let's say that we retire today, and it is January the 20th, uh, 2023. I can actually use that same date now uh, for two years because when I get into 2024, they're going to look back at 2022. And again, that income could have been high. And so we just have to appeal uh, that again. So we can use the same life changing event for a couple years because they're naturally looking back two years. And we can say to them, stop looking back. Here's my new numbers because of my qualifying life changing event.